Lisa Jammer, the Chief People and Culture Officer, will share with us what the Texas Department of Information Resources is doing to be a great place to work. She and State CIO Mandy Crawford are doing amazing work, and we're, we're glad that they are willing to share with us today. Please help me welcome Lisa Jammer to the stage. Good morning. good morning. I'm from Texas. I need a big hearty good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, wake up everyone. Let's talk IT workforce. This is something that we're all plagued with, right? We're all trying to determine how to attract, hire, and retain our talent. So today, I am going to share a few things that the Texas Department of Information Resources has done to be very successful in what we do. So let's jump in. Let's first start out with talking a little bit about workforce trends. We know in 2023, 77% of global companies reported talent shortages, which is the highest in 17 years. Yikes. Skill shortages. We're looking for talent. And yes, there are layoffs in the IT industry, but as many of us know, the supply and the demand are not aligning. There's a high demand for security, programmer, blockchain IT professionals, and software developers are still number one job in the US News and World Report. And cybersecurity professionals are in high demand. Those are all good news. But let's talk about the dark side of things. We know that 43% of employees feel like their careers have stalled. So you wonder why we have turnover? That might be one of the reasons. And 73% of current employees say they're actively thinking about quitting their jobs, oftentimes without another job lined up. Wow. 79% of American workers said company culture, it's a huge deal to them. Therein lies something. I think that we put such a focus on compensation that we've forgotten a key factor that drives employee engagement, and that's company culture. So, as a state agency, I get asked a lot, well, wait a minute, you all are competing with the private industry and other state agencies. What's the secret sauce? It's not barbecue sauce, I can tell you that. Uh, but what we're doing at DIR, we have some unique things we're gonna do that we're doing, and I, I'm looking forward to sharing some tips with you of what's come out of our agency. So, to set the stage, I've invited my friend Ted Lasso and a couple of good tips from him on leadership and team dynamics. If you have not watched Ted Lasso, let me just give a quick overview here. Ted Lasso is a TV show on Netflix, and essentially there is an American football coach that's been hired to go in to uh, teach British uh, soccer. And so there are just lots of tidbits about leadership that you find. So my first quote I'm gonna start with is, I want you to know I value each of your opinions, even when they're wrong. Same for employees. So one of the things that always bothered me working in the people and culture areas, employees turn in their resignation and they're about to leave. And you sit down with them and say, all right, tell me about your experience at my company. And then they give you everything. And my heart drops, because it's too late at that point. They're headed out. What a reactive method. So I want to invite you to start thinking about doing stay interviews. This is a proactive approach to talk to your talent right now. Setting up those meetings and saying, hey, why don't you tell me what we're doing well? This is a great time to assess the business, not just from the perspective of you, the leader, but from that employee's perspective and what's happening in the departments in the division that they sit in every day. What can the organization do better? What obstacles exist that prevent you from doing your job? Ah, that's important. The answer to that may determine if that person is ready to leave. Where do you see the organization in five years? This is where you get good innovative tips. And where do you see yourself in five years? The answer to that tells you if you have someone who's disengaged and who's ready to leave the organization. But overall, there are benefits to stay interviews. It's a great time to show your employees that their opinions matter, and we know that's important. It also builds trust, 
and it helps to identify any issues. This is the where you catch the proactive, let me see what's happening in your world before you're sitting on the other side of the table and someone's exiting the organization. At DIR, employees are stakeholders for us and we want them to know that. So when policies are changing or new programs are being in inducted, we sit down and we have focus groups. Employees are randomly selected and we bring them in, oftentimes representing about 20% of our agency. And in those meetings, our people and culture department will ask questions and get the employees' feedback. Now, the feedback is important, but what we do with it is even more important. When we walk away from those meetings, we make sure that in our communications and in our meetings, we say, hey, you asked, we heard you. Thank you for the idea, and we give them credit for those ideas. How do we know that works? When we see our employee engagement results. Our employees are saying, thank you, I have a voice. I don't need to go somewhere else and look to have a voice at another organization because I found it at home. So think about that for a minute. How often are you checking in with your employees, especially as we go into this hybrid or this remote environment? Are you asking them questions about their experiences? Innovation is key for IT. We need it, it's the only way we survive. But we have to promote it inside of our organizations. And at DIR, one of the things we do is host our version of a Shark Tank. We take business problems and we present them to the employees. And we say, hey, come up with your group of people and bring us some solutions. What are your ideas? How do we solve these business problems? The employees love it. They get to innovate, we get to hear the good things that they have and the ideas, and we get to solve them together. Again, they feel like a stakeholder. So throughout the pandemic, employees started to feel alone. We see that employee assistance program numbers are going up. We also see that mental health for our employees is taking a plunge. Why is that? Hopefully they know ain't no one in this room alone. <laughs> Belonging is key in the workplace. Belonging is the employee's sense of, I can bring my unique self to work and I'm gonna be valued and appreciated. So I'm gonna give you a little story. I started my career in accounting. Big personality, accounting. Yeah, I scared them all, don't worry. Um, and, and here I am in this accounting department, and I felt like I belong because I could give my opinion, but I knew I was in the wrong home, right? And I come in in the morning, good morning, everybody! And the accountants are like, hey, stop, we're, we're trying to get stuff in the general ledger. Like, can you, you calm down? Um, and I had to find my place. How many people in your organization are like that? They're sitting in the seat feeling like they don't belong. Belonging creates these day-to-day -day experiences that every day you're renewing your relationship with your employer. I walk in, I feel connected to my peers. I say hello, they know me, they know my children, and yes, employees want you to know those things. They want you to know the dog, the kids, and everything else happening with them because that's where relationship comes in. What we know about belonging is employees who feel like they belong are three times more likely to look forward to coming to work. So there's those sick days going down. Three times more likely to say their workplace is enjoyable. Nine times more likely to feel like they're treated fairly, regardless of their unique knowledge of skills and abilities. And they're five times more likely to want to stay with you long term. So if you're looking to retain your employees, something very simple, make them feel like they belong. Employees stop being employees during the pandemic and they're people. We can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. But the complementary friend to belonging is psychological safety. So when someone is psychologically safety and safe in the workplace, they're free to be themselves without fear of negative repercussions. I can take on stretch assignments and not worry about my career. I can tell you I don't agree with you in a meeting and walk out and still know that I can progress in my organization. So if you're wondering, is my environment psychologically safe? Well, there are some questions to ask yourself. If you make a mistake, will it be held against you? Are the members of your team able to discuss problems or challenging issues, or do you have everyone in the room shaking their head? If they're all shaking their head, P.S., you need some new team members. Don't look left, don't look right, look straight ahead, okay? Um, would anyone on the team deliberately undermine the team's success? This is a key thing. You say impossible, but all I hear is I'm possible. When employees join the organization, we sell them 
on a long-term career. And oftentimes when they get into the career, they don't know how to navigate our organizations. They come in and they're like, well, I may have to leave to go somewhere else. That's the worst thing you, you can hear from an employee. I left because there was no progression. Everyone needs an internal mobility program. An internal mobility program is a structured program that helps employees to move vertically or laterally throughout the organization. At DIR, we spend a lot of time doing career development sessions. We sit down with our employees to start with career exploration, and those meetings are hosted by our people and culture team. What's interesting to me is the average employee spends 11 hours a week looking for a job. When they are ready to look, 11 hours of their time in a week is spent on job search. The interesting side of that is they spend less than an hour determining what's really important to them. So what we've done is we help our employees to look at the job search differently. We ask them things like, what are your motivators? What are your values? What are your interests? Those are the drivers of every decision. When you get a resume, you quickly determine a lot about a person. Your resume tells a story. Just a little tip from, from someone who's recruited. When you look at a resume and you're like, well, why did this person take this job? And why did they move to this job? And you start to ask questions in an interview, you learn just how much that person may know about themselves. Do they know what motivates them outside of compensation? Do they know why they're connected to the career they're in? These are the types of things we go over with our employees and help them to navigate how it attaches to other jobs in the organization so that we can retain them long term. We also offer stretch goals and assignments. So there's vertical assignments. A vertical assignment might say, hey, employee A, um, you have a goal of 85% satisfaction for your customers. I'm going to keep you with the same things, tools, and resources you have, but I'm going to I'm going to ramp that goal up a notch. So instead of you hitting that percentage, now I want you to hit 90%. That's vertical growth. Horizontal growth, on the other hand, says, hey, I want you to increase it, but I also want you to learn some new technologies. I want you to look at emerging technologies or new tools or new resources to help you achieve it. This is stretching the employee. As you stretch them, you can utilize them across the organization and other places, and it helps to make your internal mobility program more successful. To drive employee engagement, we need our employees to have a growth mindset. And if you've not had a chance to read the book on mindset, I highly recommend it. We read it at work and it was wonderful. Um, but the interesting thing is when you look at imposter syndrome, which a lot of employees have, in their minds, when they say, I don't know if I can achieve this, or when I fail at something, it's all loss. Well, it's not all loss. Every one of us in this room has failed at something. And so having a growth mindset sounds very different. It says, I failed, but you know what? I learned something, and I'm going to apply it next time. So I'm going to go try this next thing. That's a growth mindset. Growth mindset is key, especially in a technology organization. We've got to help our people get out of their own head, because a lot of times they can be their own stumbling block. And so helping your employees to have strong emotional intelligence. I know we put a lot of emphasis on IQ, but EQ is just as important. And we know that because oftentimes when employees are exited out of the organization, it's for things that relate back to EQ. As the man once said, the harder you work, the luckier you get. If you don't walk away with anything else today, and I'm hoping you walk away with a couple of tidbits, I want to talk a little bit about recognition. It doesn't take much to just say thank you for your work. And when I am out recruiting people, and I say, hey, why do you want to leave your organization and come talk to me? They often tell me my organization's forgotten about me. I haven't talked to my manager. We're in this hybrid environment or this remote environment. I talk to my manager maybe once a month. Or I talk to my manager when they're looking for an assignment that's due. Or something's late. But I don't have relationships. Relationship is what's going to retain your employees. And it's something that our executive director, Amanda Crawford, and our, is amazing at. She understands relationship. When I get my employee surveys back, I am excited. Because one of the reasons people love working at DIR has a lot to do with the leadership team there. They're engaged. They make the employees feel like they're being recognized just by simply getting to know them and what's key and important in their life. We celebrate the small moments. We don't just wait on a special day, but we find key moments to highlight our employees. There's a couple of ways we do that. 
So we have this iLead coin, which you'll see uh, at the bottom of the screen. So when an employee joins our organization, everyone gets an iLead coin. But we have taken our mission, our vision, and our core values and tied it back to everything we do at DIR. So you don't just hear the lip service, you see it in every piece of the employee journey. So for our employees, when they are recognized, it ties back to those core values. If you are being innovative, you can receive an innovation coin. If you are leading well, you can receive that too. But we also evaluate based on those items in our performance evaluations. So it's a steady stream for employees in terms of what we are pushing forward and we are all uniquely moving together collectively to achieve the same goal. We know that organizations with recognition programs experience 28.6 lower frustration than organizations without it. While we are sitting in a remote or a hybrid environment, we can't let recognition go away. There are unique and great ways to do it. If you have Microsoft Teams, you can actually give awards in Teams to your employees just with the click of a button. It takes two minutes to just say, hey, John, thank you for what you recently did. You stood out, you brought this home. Thank you for your hard work. We also know that 52.5% of employees want more recognition from their immediate manager. Let's make sure our managers are not so head down that they're forgetting to reach out to their talent and to engage with them and to thank them and recognize them for the work being done. And don't just do it internally, but use your social media. Recognize your employees. They are telling your culture story every day. That is the key to the recruitment, right? Somebody, before anyone applies for a job, they're going out to say, what's the experience at this organization? They're looking at your LinkedIn. They're looking at everything they can to understand your story. And it's up to you to tell that story. And what story will you tell? So I hope you'll come in this afternoon We'll be having a chat um, and a talk. I'd love to talk more about workforce with you. I hope you have a wonderful conference and thank you for your time.